Hey guys, what's up? This is Jay Barr with Bar Creative, and I'm going to show you how to use Ultra Beat as a drum sequencer in 10 minutes or less. Enjoy. If you like what you see, please leave a comment. Also, if you want to know more about Ultra Beat, please leave that in the comment, and I could do another video. I just tried to make this a video to where, like, if you knew nothing about Ultra Beat, you could get in there and you could be making a beat in 10 minutes or less. Jay Barr, Bar Creative. Later. All right, guys. So what's up? This is Jay Barr. Um, the first thing you want to going to want to do is start a new track for Ultra Beat. I already have one open, but if you're not sure how to do it, select the plus button, go Software Instrument, and then click the drop down. And Ultra Beat should be installed on Logic 10. You, I would go with uh, Stereo Output and hit Create. There is a difference between Stereo and Multi, but we don't really need to know that. So the point of this video is to get you making beats like right away with Ultra Beat. All right. So if you hit the Y button it'll take away that library window and if you hit I it will take that information panel away too but you want to make sure that's open so go ahead and hit I if it's not open and click on your Ultra Beat kit or drum machine whatever you want to call it drum synth now um, so I don't know about you guys but um, and I have this Lux thing on let's uh, turn that off so that there we go that's probably better for you guys um, so <clears throat> when I first opened Ultra Beat, I was like, dude, what? It just, it looks like nonsense. And like, now that I've got a little more experience, like I still know what all these do, but the layout is just horrendous. All right. So we're going to ignore all this stuff on the front page for now and just go down to the bottom right corner and click on full view. That opens up your sequencer. It should really say sequencer view because that's really what this is. Um, but you'll notice we still don't have any samples loaded. So what we're going to do is we'll open this top part up and I'm just going to go down to drum kits and I'm going to go ahead and load a 909 drum kit and you can see it populates everything. It took me back to the main screen. Um, but again, I can, I'm just going to fold that up. I can click full view and there you go. So let's go ahead and we'll hit spacebar and see what this does. Um, there we go. So we have that beat. Now, I don't really like that beat. Let's get rid of it. So the way that you can wipe out the whole sequencer without clicking on each of these. So the way it works, these are like on off switches. Okay, just like an actual old sequencer. Um, old as an analog. Um, so it's either on or it's off and you could manipulate it and stuff. But let's say you want to just wipe the whole thing clean. The way that you do that is you go to this bottom left corner where it says pattern and you right click on it whoops right click on it and hit clear and when you do it wipes the whole sequencer clear now what's cool about that is now you can make your own beat so that we have this 909 so I can start plugging in stuff we'll just kinda see how this sounds um, just gonna go with a simple beat for now and just see what we have so uh, let's try this Let's try this one out. All right, I like that. Now, here's the breakdown. Um, what this is showing you, in case you're not familiar with sequencers, is each one of these is known as a step. And you can see all the way across, we have 32 steps. In other words, it's going to step through. When it hits 32, it's going to go back to the first one again. And uh, it just steps through the sequence. And whatever is clicked on, it will play when it gets to that region. Now, what you can do is you can go down here to length and you could change the length like let's say you just wanted it to be 16 16th notes that would be one measure and so now you'll see when I hit play it goes back to one like it'll get to 16 and then it jumps back to one so I usually like to make this a resolution of 32 because that gives me two measures it gives me the ability to make a little variation and so that's how you know that's how I get started now the way that I use Ultra Beat is I use it as kind of like a beat sketcher. Like in other words, if I want to get a beat going really fast, I'll just go straight to Ultra Beat and just lay something down. Like the samples that are included with Logic aren't the greatest samples in the world, but it's enough to get you going. All right. With that said, we have our bass and our snare. Let's add some hats in. So hats are here. By the way, while I'm thinking of it, on the left side, this represents a piano keyboard. You can see it's C, C, uh, C sharp, D flat, D, 
E flat, E, F, and it just goes up. All right, so it's about, uh, it's like a 25 key MIDI keyboard. I think it starts on C1, but that's important if you're using a MIDI controller because this is going to correspond to where that sound is on your MIDI controller. So if you wanted to hit the floor tom, you'd be needing to look for F1 on your MIDI controller. So if you're using a pad or if you're using an actual keyboard, that's how you can kind of tell where your sounds are going to be. All right, so we have our bass and we have our snare. Let's get some hi-hats in there. And what's cool about Ultra Beat is that I could just go and put some random stuff in here, right? And I'll just kind of, I'm just going to click on a bunch of stuff and we'll see what that sounds like. It sounds like the hi-hats are all over the place. There's a cool function where if you right click and do alter existing randomly, it'll actually shuffle them up for you. So that's kind of cool. Let's say we want to get this moved around. You can click these on or off, um, and you can kind of set it up like that, all right? Um, and I'll put these in like that. So that sounds pretty cool, all right? I mean, it's not great, but it's a start. So what I'm trying to show you is how to quickly get some beats going. Now, once you have something you like, this is another thing that's really cool with Ultra Beat. What you can do is you can take, um, let's see, I'll move this so you can see what I'm doing. I can go down here next to pattern, you know, where I cleared it before, and I can actually click and drag this in. And when I do, it actually makes a MIDI region, which I think is awesome because now you can hold down the option key and duplicate it, and you can actually go into the second one and make a variation. So just for the sake of this video, to keep it short, by the way, I did Command-4 to open up this bigger screen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put all these uh, 16th note hi-hats in, just so you can see what I'm talking about. So for me, my secondary tool is the pencil. I can hold down Command and just click on these to draw them in. I'm so going to hit and the version quickly and number three. Now, now that I have that set up, I can go back. Let's see. Oh, uh, we'll the head. Here. All right. Control X is cut. Control V is paste. And if I want to build some variation into my song, what I can do is go to the second one, hit Command-4. Oh, dude, it got rid of all my hi-hat stuff. Let's see. Maybe it didn't. Command-4. There it is. All right, cool. Now I can play it. So let's check it out. All right, so we have that one... Uh, Aaron Tom so let's see where that is command for there it is it didn't delete yet all right so that's cool so now you can build in some variation so we got the first beat now you can hear it's kind of got a wobble to it and the reason for that is, is if you forget to turn off the sequencer the sequencer is also going to play when you hit when you hit play so like let me show you what I mean so if I put the playhead over here and I hit play there's nothing here, but I'm still getting drums, and the reason for that is because the sequencer is on. So you just got to turn it off. And when you do that, only your MIDI regions will play. So if I reset it, there it is. And then if I want to just make this a loop, I can highlight both of them, hold down Option, and just drag them out. You know, and I have, you know, I could build beats very quickly, and that's why I like Ultra Beat. It's kind of a sloppy. Um, it's not the greatest drum synth in the world, but as far as getting started in Logic and getting the drum beat down so you can start making music, like it's pretty fast. I mean, this is less than 10 minutes long, and already we have something. All right, guys? So um, whatever else you want to know about Ultra Beat, leave it in the comments because I'll do another video on it. I just wanted to make this video so that if you were like, dude, this Ultra Beat thing, like how does this work? It looks crazy. This is the fastest way to get a beat in Ultra Beat. Just open up the Ultra Beat, click on it, and if you go to the full view, like so it looks like this, if you go to full view, you'll see your sequencer and you can just start plugging stuff in and trying it out. Now, one last thing, if you did want to get your sequencer back on, um, what you could do is you could highlight your MIDI parts, right? Like if you want to just try new parts, highlight your MIDI parts, do control M and it'll mute out your MIDI parts and then you go back over here put your sequencer back on and you can audition certain things, okay? Um, and then when you get what you like, you can click on the pattern, drag it in, and then go ahead and turn the sequencer back off because at that point, 
it'll just play your MIDI regions to get these back on. Control M turns them back on. So this is J Bar. This was how to use Ultra Beat in 10 minutes or less. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Later.